Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this thing, this is really cool. Right? Paper Soldiers. I mean, Paper Soldiers was a less expensive alternative back in the day to the Toy Soldiers. Uh, you know, made of tin or what have you, or lead. <laughs> and, uh, and they would print out sheets that the, uh, the kids back then could cut out and uh, put together to have a little army of uh, soldiers to play with or to do stuff. And taking that old idea, um, they've made a bunch of these war games uh, based on this, okay, we could we make these paper soldiers and terrain and other things uh, And you have of course most of them are you know the typical war gaming with the uh, the dice But they had an idea to do the little wars uh, Thing where you're actually gonna you're gonna shoot these things with a cannon and there are people that play this game uh, Also, I've seen them on I'll, I'll link to them, but uh, Print your own armies, right? Peter Dennis, okay, you know Peter Dennis. He's a great British artist. He does a lot of stuff for Osprey. Like he'll do like the color, uh, you know, the ones where they have like a scene and and they'll have numbers next to things, and then the next page you'll have a smaller black and white print of that, and you'll see the details of what is actually going on. So it doesn't get in the way of the color art. Great, great artist. Okay, you can tell this was a fun thing for him to do. Particularly the art here. This is essentially a reprint of Little Wars minus the. Uh, the, uh, the, the part where Wells is going over like a typical campaign. The nice intro, and there's a nice, nice surprise, there's a nice surprise at the end in terms of the game, the different kind of games you could do. I think you can see the, the, uh, the clues are gonna be here. Right? Um, the art's kind of funny, right? Usually the, the Peter Dennis art's pretty serious, still dealing with warfare, but this is kind of quaint, right? The old, uh, right? What do they say? Hey, a charming book, redolent of the long Edwardian summer, right? And you see, like, these grown-ass these grown -ass men playing with toys, and the, you can see that the little boy's like, the hell is this? And, of course, the woman, I, do, I don't approve. The women do not approve. Right? Silly men, right? Uh, but essentially, it's a great intro, uh, kind of going over some kind of things that I was going over in the, uh, the actual reprint, uh, right? Uh, Little Wars, right? Robert Louis Stevenson actually had a game as well with intricate rules, like the Kriegspiel, like the Prussian thing. But uh, it's no, no, it's like no game played today, okay? Because it turned out to be a dead end, right? Because of the gun that you shoot things with, okay? Um, and he describes the gun and how when they they made a cheaper version of it, the accuracy was gone, right? And of course. Uh, so uh, it's a historical oddity, right? It's often reprinted but never imitated. Right? Usually, people I see playing the game, they're not really war gamers like you have, you know, with the, uh, the with the, you can go into that whether it's the British style, the American style. But still, it repay it repays a careful reading, right? Okay, they're telling references to contemporary military developments, the lesson of the Boer War, right? Scandals of crouching concealment. Yeah, we're not coming out to fight you, you know, you know Britisher. Are you nuts? Uh, broader issues of technology, morality, right? One of the things that you read in there, he goes, when they were doing this, they, he was finding the guns were all together too predominant. They prevented attacks getting home. <sighs> well, <laughs> wasn't that going to be? I mean, uh, people who saw the Civil War saw that, uh, but the war that was about to come a year after sort of really brought that home to a horrifying degree. And it had it had an effect on Mr. Wells as well. Um and you know, there's some other things with the rules here. Uh, just like I like going through the art, right? You see the caveman, and uh, <laughs> this is funny. To me, it's funny. It probably offends people now, but you know me, so it's my middle name, right? Uh, is this primitive attempts? Let's see. Oh, to realize the dream, interrupted by a great rustle and chattering of lady visitors. They regarded the objects upon the floor, the empty disdain of their sex for all imaginative things. And you can see, you can see these guys. You can see her. She's like. I don't approve. I don't understand it. Right? You can see that she's like, you know, and of course at the other end you got the freaking dog just sees things that it can grab and run off with. That's what I'm saying. The art's very quaint, you know. And, and real quick mention too, um, very touching. Uh, this man uh, was writing about an old war gamer and writer for, uh, I guess, the uh, war gaming journalism for many decades. Uh, this man had passed away, and so Dennis made a like uh, a likeness of him. So that was kind of touching. Um, and you get like the humor, right? You have the humor here, right? The idea of the hand-to-hand -hand combat, how it was, uh, you know, what is this? Ah, <laughs> the idea that you had a curtain, right? So you couldn't see what the other guy was doing. Okay? Although this little kid looks like he's gonna rat, he's gonna be a spy. Right? Um, 
you know, the, the different scales, obviously the 54 millimeter scale is bigger, right? Uh, out of one Bismarck. <laughs> yeah. You know, and a nice sum up of the rules. Now, the cool thing about it in this also is that to, to make it interesting, they add, they sort of uh, uh, mix in another Wells story, a very, just War of the Worlds, man. If you have not read that or you haven't read that in a while, reread it, okay? If you remember it, uh, it was a terribly one-sided, right? The, they have a little War of the Worlds uh, mod to the game. So, um, and you, you, the rules, right? You need at least two Martian walkers, right? And you have the movements. Uh, the Martians can pretty much do whatever they want. Uh, and your only chance is to really get a shot in with your artillery, right? Uh, of course, the problem is, if you remember the book, when uh, the artillery actually took out one of the walkers, uh, the other tripods then just sent black smoke everywhere, black poison smoke everywhere to kill all life forms with, uh, in the area. Isn't that another... Isn't that another thing? I'll, I'll go over that at some point with the gas warfare that everyone has seems to have forgotten about. I like here how they can how you can shoot the heat ray. You use a measuring tube as a blowpipe, and with a lung full of air, right? You blow over as many of the soldiers as you can. So I think that was cool. But there is a way to win, right? There is a way to win. Uh, the the Martians were not invincible in War of the Worlds even before. The, they got hit with the, the germs, right? They had an ironclad scene where it rammed into one of these things and took it out. So, uh, well, okay. Well, how do you make the walkers and how? Well, yeah, you're gonna you can make this, right? The whole idea of the cannon. Now, of course, they show how to do it, right? You you would fold them, you score it. If you're familiar with that term, usually they use that for like uh, props in a movie. You score it, right? You fold it together, you glue it. Uh, you glue the little card base here. You know, a lot of gluing. It's, it's it takes a lot of time. The guy says it is addictive, and it actually it is. I have actually made some of these last year. Now here, the whole thing, and I will admit, uh, they make a paper cannon. They actually you make a cannon with, out of cardboard and the paper and lots of glue and a rubber band, and you can make the ammo out of like little pieces of tissue paper, or, like with glue on it or whatever. You can actually make a working cannon. Okay, I made two of these. Um, I, I took my time. I'm not an expert. Obviously, the guy even says you get better uh, the more you do it. Uh, but I made two of these. I tried to use them. I just, I, I, I could not hit anything with them. I just couldn't, I just, uh, I couldn't hit anything with them. I just wasn't accurate. I must have made a mistake somewhere. However, there are alternatives. And I'll link to some videos of other ways to, to do this game. But in general, you know. Yeah, this is some trip right here. But basically the sheets, and they say don't cut the sheets out. Photocopy them. Make them 93% size on a, a color copier. Uh, and use that and use these as the base. And you have pretty much just the British, it's the British Empire versus essentially the French. Right? So, you know, you'll have diversity, but it made sense because you had colonial soldiers. You have your horsemen, your, 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 your cuirassiers, right? uh, the cavalry. The men, the better troops, the light infantry, the Zoavs. So, like I said, like they're all based, like, uh, I guess these are the Moroccan, no, the Algerians. Um, really interesting. And, of course, this is how you make the cannon, right? You photocopy this, how you make the walkers. And I like this here, too. You see the uh, the working class, regular folk of uh, England caught up in, and I'll tell you, read War of the Worlds again. You want to talk about the effects of bombing and the effects of warfare on civilians uh with you know modern uh, weapons and weapons from mars literally and you see these poor people you see like they're kind of like you know i guess you have a suffragette here ah, white feather girl huh you got some uh, uh, rough characters here and you got like the capitalist pig you know with his garden right? you're not gonna take my money you know <laughs> but i kind of like that when you see like the regular folk of england here they, they kind of have like this look of you know, uh, you know, on their face, kind of a fatalistic look. Right? So I thought that was a nice touch. Real, real good stuff here. Um, let's see. All right, and that's uh, sort of what they look like. You know. Re really, really interesting. Because, of course, one of the most important things are these things, the base. Right? You have to make the base on them. So you uh, the paper, cardboard, and glue, uh, and you can make these. 